Uh, Brutal here at the first ever YCS post COVID, YCS Charlotte. Let's go. We have here Jibril on the channel, IRL in person. In what's person. Up, dude? Hey, hey, what's man, up, bro? You've been dominating the, uh, the mode dual format, you know, the, the online, online format, and now IRL. Insane. Yeah. So, what did you use? What place did you get? Uh, I finished 9 and 2 after Swiss, 21st place. DB Warrior oh, comes to IRL and you know we just came out here in order to do our best and represent all the DB and online players and I think uh, me and a couple of my boys that are also in top cut and still playing it out uh, I think we did that so I'm very proud of myself and very proud of my crew shout out to my team team scheme shout out to the barbershop that's my personal server shout out to the whole online community we're out here you yeah. know yes without further ado please shows the good Okay, so for this weekend, I played Sword Soul, uh, three copies of Moye, one Tae. Um, a lot of people play two Tae. I only played one, and the second one never came up for me. I think if you play conservatively, you don't really need the second Tae. A lot of the time, you'll end up with a worm in hand, and you'll just search another Moye for your follow-up. You don't need the second Tae for your follow-up. If you're using the second Tae for your follow-up, that means that you like messed up the combo to where you don't have another worm in hand. Um, three copies of Longyon. It's the best extender. It helps you play past, play past Valor and Imperm. Um, it's not that great when you get Ogre on your normal summon, but like it, help, it basically makes all your 10s and uh, is really needed. And then the last Sword Soul card is three copies of Ecclesia. It's just another name. It turns into any of the other ones and is broken going second. It helps like crack boards like really easily. Uh, for the Sword Soul spells and traps, three emergence, it's Rhoda. Uh, I used the level modification effect once. Um, it doesn't really come up, but this is just Rota and then one blackout. That's it for the Sword Soul part of the deck. For the Worms, uh, played three Ashuna, three Adhara, two Vishuda, and one Shatana. Um, this ratio is pretty standard. I'm playing the fiber version of the deck, so you have to play three copies of Adhara. Three Ashuna standard is the best one. Two Vishuda is really good going second. Uh, some people are playing three, but I don't think it's that great going first. And the one Shatana, you have to play a level four one. You could, there is some argument for playing the wind one for Flunderies, but this card's effect actually comes up in game and it, uh, it, it can win you games. Like it won me a, a game against, uh, what do you call it, prank kids. So that's it for the tenny like worm monsters. And for the worm spell support, uh, two copies of Vessel. I decided to play two copies of Vessel, no circle, and no uh, third copy of Vessel. Shout out to Lund, he's a, he's a good friend of mine, so he helped me build this deck, and for this weekend we decided to go with two copies of Vessel and two copies of Emergency Teleport. Um, a lot of the times you see people maxing out like three and three, or three and none, or n three and like one, but we decided to go for two and two. because. They're both serving similar purposes in the deck as help of helping you get to fiber with certain hands. And I felt that not one wasn't necessarily better than the other because this helps you when you get stopped on your normal summon like a Veil or Imperm. And this helps when you get Ogre. So they both have similar purposes and I thought that they were equally as good, you know? So we decided to play two and two of those. Uh, and then one copy of Desires. <laughs> it's the God card. This card literally is like broken in these type of decks like Sword Soul, Traffic, and these mid-range decks that like really um, do well when they have more cards than their opponent because they take multiple cards in order to play and just keep on grinding. So that's it for like the engine part of the deck. And then uh, actually for the last engine, one Despot. He's the boy. Uh, I drew this card a lot more than I would want to. I actually drew this in game three of top 32 and my hand was atrocious because I had this and it, among other bricks, but you need it for the fiber. Then for the most important part of the deck, the part of the deck that kind of like carries this format, the hand traps, I played three Ash, three Ogre, uh, and then for this weekend I decided to play three copies of Ghost Bell. So when uh, I was steering for this event and getting ready, uh, I was thinking about what are the most popular decks that I expected to play this format, and or at least for this event, and the two most popular decks that I thought would be at top tables and a lot of would have a lot of representation were Prank Kids and Cyber's Eldlick, and both two of those decks are DP decks, 
and both two of them in engine lose to Bell at certain choke points. So I thought that Bell would be a really good choice as a 3 0 instead of a card like Baylor and Primus, which a lot of people just like when they think of like hand traps to put in their deck, they just they just go for the ones that you see that everyone played, like cards like Valor and Imperm. But like cards like these kind of tech cards are gonna like put you ahead in an event like this. And this card actually overperformed. I build a lot of DPEs. I build dot scapers. I build all type right, not right. Um, Aquamancer. Like yeah. this card overperformed. Like literally one of the reasons. Uh, round ten. The only reason why I won my match is because game three I drew Bell for his bow wow. Like. This card is actually insane. I I was very pleased that I played this card. And then obviously, three copies of Nibiru. Uh, Nibiru is like the best hand trap of the format, but it's weird because this format is like so degenerate that Nibiru is the best hand trap of the format, but it only works if you draw it with another one of these. And then I'll show uh, two Veilers. So basically, the <laughs> Nibiru is the best hand trap, but it only works if you draw it with another hand trap. So that's the issue with this format. Like, as soon as your opponent activates right, you automatically have to have two hand traps in order to play the game, yeah. which is kind of unfortunate. But that's why I decided to max out on the best hand traps that I felt. Valor and Imperm are garbage into right. So I didn't play Imperm at all. And I played two Valor just for the fact that it's a level one and it's a tuner. And it's fine against the Cybers Eldlick deck because you can. Um, you can Valor the Verte, you can Vert, um, Valor the Dagda so they don't get to Scythe because you can handle the DP, you just can't handle them Scythe locking you. So you want to like uh, Valor the Dagda. And then, yeah, so that's it for the main deck. Uh, the main deck was 43 cards. Okay, respect. Yeah. I was uh, trying to draw this guy, but unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, for real. Shout out to the tokens, best water starters, Blast Lord Swamper, and uh, for Alligator. Yeah. They, were, <laughs> they were the water tokens all weekend long. Uh, for the extra deck, I played for the tens. I played one Long Yun, one uh, Cheng Yin, and then one copy of Baron. I probably this weekend I summoned this one the least surprisingly because like it's not that great into the Brave engine because if they start with like right, then they just Draco back bounce this, and you kind of like need it with like another monster to proc the banish in order for this card to really work. Uh, Baron. I was summoning a good amount of the time just to protect my place from nib or like when i'm going second like it pops a card it, it does a lot by itself going second but like going first this was the card i was trying to summon every game if i could summon the level 10. this card is just one of the best extra deck monsters in general this format because it it deals with two cards just two interruptions by itself like you would think that the spell and trap banish doesn't really come up but with cards like Faithful Adventure in the format like is really important and like against a deck like Dragonlink, like hitting their Brute Sector and Dragon Ravine. I actually played against three Dragonlink this weekend. Like this card is really broken versus those type of decks. Any deck that plays the Brave Engine, this card is a go-to card in that matchup. Then for the eight, I played one Draco Berserker. Um, is the only generic quote-unquote level eight in the extra deck. Um, it really. It, it helps OTK going second. Going first is not that great this format. Like last format, this card was great going first, just ending on this with like a she shout. But this format with the Brave cards, a lot of extra deck uh, monsters that aren't negating or spot removal for like multiple different types of cards are like kind of like subpar. It's mainly just there for going second and help pushing for game. Two, uh, Zhijiao. Uh, you need this card, it's the best card in the extra deck. It when paired with Moya, you're getting a draw and you're searching, so it's basically engaged, and then it's also impermanent, which obviously, like how I talked about earlier, impermanence is garbage, so like, the imperm effect is never really gonna resolve this format. Like, you might hit like a Verte every once in a while, but like, most of the time, it's just gonna get bounced, so you're gonna tribute this for Blackout. Um, two copies of Boxia. This card is insane, going second and going first, like helping extend by reviving stuff, but going second, like, you just summon two of these and you just clear like four cards, revive two cards, and it's just game. Uh, one Yazi, uh, it's for the fiber combo, and sometimes you actually can go into this hard and just like pop non target and then just summon another guy to help like extend. And then one copy of Herald. This card is only here for the fiber combo, and with a card in the um, side deck that we're gonna get to, this card is sided out a lot of the times. Um, then for the Link monsters, two Monk, you're playing the fiber version. So you only have room for two Monk. If there were 16 cards that you could play in the extra deck, I'd play a third Monk first. Uh, one Shaman. This card doesn't come up every game and is definitely like a cuttable card. 
but when it does come up it comes up it's, it came up multiple times for me this weekend so i would probably keep it and then fiber the the most broken card right now next to verte and then aurora down so that's the extra deck that's what's up and then uh for the side deck I, I think the side deck is like really where i was able to show uh express like some uh techs you know like that that's where it got like techy right um and i think it really put me ahead it caught a lot of people off guard and it helped me like get to where i finished first three copies of <laughs> cherries Let's go. so cherries a lot of people know about this card it's this point in this format but people don't expect it in a deck like sorcel people expect it in the brave decks where you're already playing in your extra deck the cards that you would hit off of cherries but no this card is so broken i decided i don't care that i'm playing sorcel i'm going to find a way to play this card and i decided one copy of dpe and one copy of meow meow so the theory is behind this against cybers eldic and against prank kids you side in cherries and you take out Harold for whatever the matchup is. So this card is for the fiber combo. And a lot of the times you're trying to kill your opponent on the first time, on the first turn. So you're not really gonna be able to resolve this. Like even if you do go for the fiber combo, you're not going for this, you're going straight into Yazi and keeping the token. So you side this card out and then against prank kids, you side in these three with Meow Meow. And then against Cybers Eldic, you side in these three with DPE. And against Cybers Eldic, if you hit their DPE, they don't have a win condition. Like, it's literally just Griffin Control. And I'm playing a deck that, like, it, surprisingly, even though it's a goal first deck, goes second really well. Like, my deck can kill you on the first turn. And I can beat a Griffin. So, I'm fine with that. So, this was, like, broken in the side deck. Um, next, we have Driver 3 Gamma. It's generically good going second. You just want to see it paired with like a card like Nibiru or another hand trap and just like stop something uh, important. It's not good enough to main deck because you don't want to play too many bricks this format. Like, the reason why I played this deck is because this deck has like generally even matchups all around. And then with tech cards and proper like um, technical play, you can just like win games. Like, you're gonna struggle like it's gonna be like an actual grind game and you're gonna have to like think but you should be able to win most games with this deck if you just play properly because of the way this deck is okay. and then um so yeah so that's three gamma and driver uh three copies of twin Ooh. i was afraid of trap decks for this event i thought it was the first event back and this format is kind of weird like every week there's a new best deck like first it was phantom nice then it was base now everybody's on prank kids so like every week is a new best deck so i expected a lot of people to just go back to decks that they're comfortable with which funny enough are decks like eldritch and flunderies yeah. like decks that are like really easy to pilot and can just sack your opponent really hard because of like their floodgate decks so i played three copies of twin uh some of the people that i were testing with they told me to cut this card and not play it because i wouldn't play against any back row decks and they were right i played against one eldritch it did win me the game against the eldritch but that's one round out of 11 and this card never came in but i would continue to play it just in case you run into those type of decks because you don't want to have nothing for those type of decks because you have too many cards in your main deck that are really bad and you want to have at least be able to side in three twins for like three copies of nibiru against like an eldritch deck you know and then for the best card in my entire side deck that won me so many matches i'm sad that i didn't see it in top 32 Three copies of Rivalry of Warlords. <laughs> Let's go. So, some people at the moment are playing Sanctum with Scythe. I was playing it for a while. At, um, a couple weeks ago, I played at a PS5 tournament that I won. I played Sanctum and Scythe, and I immediately cut it. It was terrible. It's so bad, this format. Sanctum Scythe is so bad, this format, yeah. because what's going to happen is your opponent is going to start with Rite of Armasia. They're going to summon a token, you're gonna go on resolution, scythe them because they're gonna add the griffin next. You scythe them, they normal summon a guy, add Draco back, put a brick in your hand, summon griffin, and then you've really accomplished nothing. You're gonna just lose next turn because they still have like five cards in hand. They have all their hand traps and stuff. Like you're just gonna lose. But this card, they activate right, they summon a token, you go, okay, chain this. Now they can only summon fairy monsters. And 
I don't know. Like, the agent support isn't out yet, so no one's playing fairies right now. Yeah. And you just sit on this, and all of your monsters are worms. So not only could they not play, and it takes, like, two to three turns to out it, because what they have to do is they have to go faithful, add another Aquamancer, discard it, and then summon another token next turn to add the Draco back. So it gives you, like, at least another turn. But... On the snapback, they can't even Nibiru you. Because rivalry is on the board and you control a worm, so they can't attempt to put a rock monster on your board. So you just kill them next turn. So this card was insane. This card was literally the best card on the side. I don't know if I would main this card, but this card definitely potentially could be in the main deck. This card's broken. That's what's up. Very nice, teeny, social deck. Thank you for all the explanations. And yo, next time you got this, man. Yeah, bro. Next time we're going for the win. Yeah, All for right. sure, for sure. Thanks again, man. And Portal Nation, if not Portal Nation, it's still for Portal. It's that easy as free. Hold God, yes. Alright, Portal out.